there, but just talk about the principles of investing. Like, hey guys, George Gammon here. I kind of know what the I'm doing. Here are some key elements that you should understand. Number one rule is don't try to guess which direction the price is going. Mm -hmm. And that's what everyone does. That's, that's their starting point. They ask themselves, okay, Bitcoin or real estate or the S&P 500, is it going up or down in price? That is unknowable. Right. And uh, Stan Druckenmiller only gets it right 55% of the time. Yeah. So if he's getting it right only 55% of the time, trust me, you're not going to get and it tell right. tell our friends who Stan Druckenmiller is. He's one of the greatest investors of all mm -hmm. time. Uh, in fact, his track record as a hedge fund manager is probably the best uh, of all time. And he's done it through multiple mm -hmm. decades, bear markets, bull markets, you name it. Okay, so number one, don't guess what the S&P is going to do. Or just the price of something. Right. And that's where everyone starts. They always ask me, you know, on my live streams, George, you know, do you think real estate is going higher? Should I buy a house right now? Or should I wait? You know, that's a price question. Mm -hmm. Instead of what you want to do is understand that it's completely unknowable. But what is knowable is asking the question, is it cheap? Or is it expensive, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at a long-term chart of oil adjusted for inflation, you can see that when it gets under $30 a barrel, it's cheap. When it gets over 80, 85, it's expensive. So simply wait until it gets cheap and buy it. And then when it gets expensive, sell it. Don't try to figure out the price. Mm -hmm. And a great example of this, a uh, couple in 2012, when I went uh, you know, headfirst into real estate, I actually thought the prices were going lower. But I still bought. Why? Because it was cheap. I wasn't trying to guess the price direction. And out of that portfolio I bought in 2012, I started selling those houses in 2018. Did I think the price was going up? Probably. But I sold anyway because I'm not trying to guess the price direction. It just got expensive, you see. And, and how that, do you gauge, like, just based on your own sentiment of it, whether it's expensive or no, cheap? No, you just look at a chart, of okay. a, a, an inflation-adjusted chart of aggregate real estate in the United States going back to 1900. And it's you can find that chart simply just Google search and you can see when it gets expensive. You can see its historic trend line. And uh, you know another example was March 2020 uh, when oil got, it was right around 20 bucks a barrel. I thought it was going to 10. Uh, didn't and it get to zero at some point? They were to paying negative $38 yeah, okay, a barrel exactly. you know, in the futures market. But I thought it would go lower, but I bought anyway. Uh, why? Because it was cheap. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I sold oil at uh, probably 85 a barrel. Did it go higher? Yeah, absolutely it did. But I wasn't trying, that's not the question I was trying to answer. So what you're doing there is you're, you're getting the probabilities or you're playing to the probabilities. You've got a positive edge. So mathematically, if you have an edge, the longer you employ that strategy, the higher likelihood that you actually make money. Very similar to blackjack. Uh, I started playing blackjack in the early 2000s and learned how to count cards, and it was very beneficial really? in my entrepreneurial career. So Absolutely. You're, you're like Zach Galifianakis in The Hangover, just like Rain Man <laughs> I believe vibes. that. I believe you <laughs> could. Well, I, I, yeah. I used to do that stuff. But it, so it you're really, counting cards at the blackjack It trains your brain wow. to think in terms of probabilities. Mm -hmm. And the you know a lot of people, when I, sold, when I started selling real estate in 2018 as an example, they'd say, oh boy, you've really got to be kicking yourself right now because you missed out on all of those gains. Nothing could be further from the truth because I played correctly based on the probabilities, you see? So the example I use in blackjack terms, mm -hmm. it's like you're in Vegas with a buddy of yours and you know, you, you've had a few drinks and they're doing shots of tequila and yada, yada, yada. You know how to play blackjack, they don't. The kid gets a, a 19, let's say, and uh, he's like, you know what? I think I'm going to hit because I think the dealer is showing it too. bro. <laughs> and you're like, you know, that's not a good idea. Uh, just trust me. Oh, George, yeah. you're being too conservative. What do you know? Oh, you're always, you know, trying to play with your stupid probabilities. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and hit. I'm feeling lucky. So let's say they hit, they get a two, yeah. and they get 21. They get blackjack. Did they do the They're right? Gonna, I told you so, George. You see, mm -hmm. that's right. It's logic it's versus emotion, which obviously the that's rational right. male, we could speak right. on what but, logic but, Never tell me the odds. <laughs> but but yeah. the question is, did they do the right thing or the wrong thing? And I would argue they did the wrong thing yeah. because they have a negative edge based on the probabilities. So if they do that continually, there's a 100% uh, 
chance that they go bust. Mm -hmm. They will absolutely go bust. So that's how I, I tend to look at uh, investing. And it would just blow your mind the percentage of retail investors that don't think in those terms. They, they think in terms of price direction, which is unknowable, instead of cheap and expensive, which actually is knowable. So if you like that clip, click right here to watch another. Or if you want to watch the entire SauceCast, click right here.